Oh, what's going on, guys? Tell Twins back at you with another video. Yeah, man. Uh, as you guys know, the Steelers as well did every single team in the NFL. They had to trim uh, the the roster down from 90 players to 53 players today uh, at the 4 o'clock deadline and everything. And uh, it's a pretty sad day, you know, and everything to see these guys get cut. It's And their dreams, you know, come to a crushing end and everything. R right. Um, depending on how you look at it. But, you know, it's, it's something we hate to see, but it's something that needs to be done, which sucks. But... Um, definitely one of the more sad parts of the NFL, uh, of the NFL year, every year and everything. So, um, but let's just get right into it. Uh, we're going to go down the list. We're going to start with offense, then move down to defense and everything. But first, um, Steelers made a trade today. Uh, like usual, you know, Kevin Colbert always gets in the mind of doing a trade and everything, but uh, on cut day and everything, you know, we... Speculated maybe he trades Josh Dobbs, maybe Eli Rogers, you know, maybe Anthony Chicolo or whatever, you know, guys like that. Or trade for a tight end or something like that. Any kind of needy position that would apply depth. Right, which could still happen, but uh, instead of instead of any of that, we actually traded Gerald Hawkins, who was the Steelers' fourth round pick in 2016 and everything. And um, I'll take it. I mean, honestly, Gerald Hawkins didn't have no role on the team. He wasn't going to find any success on the team. Uh, Zach Banner completely beat him out for the backup tackle position. So, he had, again, he had no role on this team, but it's best to trade him and and get some out of him than to just cut him and everything. Which, yeah, because we were going to get rid of him regardless. So, yeah. just like you said, best to get something out of him. Yeah. And what we did, we, what we did with the uh, trade is we traded Gerald Hawkins to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Uh, we traded, uh, excuse me, we traded Gerald Hawkins and a 2021 seventh round pick to the Buccaneers. I'm sorry to get oh. to receive. A, goddamn, I'm fucking up. I'm tired, as you guys. But it's tell. like one o'clock and shit. We were watching All Out and everything, crazy pay per view and shit. But yeah, yeah um, we traded Gerald Hawkins and a 2021 seventh round pick to Tampa Bay for their sixth round pick in 2021, pretty much. So, um. Yeah, I mean, again, he had no role on this team. He he was just going to get cut, so it's best to get something out of him. These late-round swappings, these late-round picks can honestly be be special. You know, don't underestimate him. You know, Antonio Brown was a six-round pick, and we know what he did for the Steelers and everything before it all came down to a crushing end. And, you know, even, uh, you know, of course, we got to bring up Tom Brady was a six-round pick. Even Ulysses Gilbert, who actually made the roster tonight, uh, or today, he was a six-round pick this past year, and he has the potential to be a breakout player in the next few years. So these late-round picks can be special. These late-round picks are very underrated and very underwhelming. They, you know, they they get a bad reputation, but these guys can be the future of your team, honestly. So it's it's best to get something early out of them. And that's exactly what we did. Gerald Hawkins, his career was just dead to injuries. It, it was just, you know, full of injuries. You know, he just. He, he had no luck, you know, but uh, it's just best to get rid of him and everything, and that's what we did, and to get some out of him is even better. So, uh, but uh, we're just going to go down the list uh, the, uh, to the cuts, the 53-man roster, we'll, or the, I'm sorry, the cuts, then we'll get to 53-man roster. We'll start with the offense. Um, quarterback Devlin Hodges, running backs Trey Edmonds, Trevon Mc, McMillan, and uh, Malik Williams, receivers Trey Griffey, Johnny Holton, which we'll get into late, uh, we'll get into after the offense, Dev Tevin Jones, Brandon Riley, Eli Rogers, and Deontay Spencer. So some some pretty su surprising surprising but not surprising cuts at receiver. Um, and uh, for the tight ends, we cut Mickey Crum, Kevin Rader, Christian Scotland Williamson, and Trevor Wood. And on the offensive line, we cut Garrett Brumfield, Derwin Gray, J J.C. Uh, Hazenewer. Is is that how you? I, I again when we know you guys know we 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 have a terrible reputation for. Uh, pronouncing guys' names wrong and everything. It's just... Yeah, so we apologize in advance, but we're trying our best. Right, right so, so cut us some slack. Right, so uh, uh, Patrick Morris and Damian Prince were released. So that's for the offense. Uh, obviously, some big names is Devlin Hodges. Um, he might have a chance at the practice squad. I hope he... I, I would say he had a chance at the practice squad. He didn't look bad in preseason at all. Honestly, you could say he did better than Dak Prescott. I would not blame you whatsoever. I'm not going to argue you. you say Dak him. Prescott, you mean Josh Dobbs? Is there any fucking I mean, difference yeah, at this I point? Mean, well, technically, yeah. Is there any difference? I mean, Dobbs. Is, the only difference is that Dax is starting. I don't know how, but um, <laughs> De but still, Devlin Hodges. You can honestly say he did better than Dax. Josh, you want Josh Dobbs? 
What the fuck, bro? It's fucking late and shit. Uh, Devlin Hodges, you could say he did better than Josh Dobbs. Holy shit. Yeah, uh, in preseason and everything. I'm not going to argue with you. I'm not going to disagree with you. He could make the practice squad, or he could be signed again as our number three because apparently the Steelers are open to trading Josh Dobbs more preferably for a tight end. They're in the open market for a tight end. A few tight ends were cut today, guys like Luke Wilson and Jordan Leggett and uh, another tight end who I can't remember at this moment. But the tight end market, the, uh, they are looking into the tight end market, and there are a few reliable guys available, guys much more superior than Zach Gentry and, and, and Xavier Grimble. So we'll see what happens. Um, Johnny Holton, who had a very impressive and promising uh, preseason um, getting – Signed late and everything, and making the most out of his opportunity. He definitely had the potential to make the uh, to make the fifty three as a number six receiver. But honestly, it sucks to see him go. But he did make a uh, uh, he did tweet that said, and I quote, "Damn, I love Pittsburgh." So he could still find a role uh, in Pittsburgh. I don't think he's going to go anywhere. He could be on the practice squad. Maybe we were signing because the there are the moves are not done. We could put guys on IR. We could still bring him in as a six receiver or whatever. So we'll see what happens. But it sucks to see him go. He could make the practice squad, but I don't think his time in Pittsburgh is uh, not over. Because, no, I don't think so either. Yeah, so. um And uh, Eli Rogers, I mean, again, it sucks to see him go as well. I really like Eli Rogers. He was pretty clutch at times. He was a very good, reliable slot guy at times. But, um... What does Eli like? Like Ryan Switcher can do everything that Eli Rogers can do, only better. So, right, did course. we really need Eli Rogers? You know, exactly. We, we don't really need two backup slot guys, really. Right, and Deontay Spencer. I mean, I like Spencer, but he's not more than a special teams guy. That's that's pretty much it. While Johnny Holton and and Eli Rogers actually hold more. I to guess the you offense, can say honestly. really. I mean, Spencer receiving wise hasn't done much at all. But returning wise, absolutely right. But Johnny Holton, you know, he can play special teams as well. Um, he can pretty much he's a Darius Hayward Blake Cone, right. pretty much. He's so. a nice deep throw with speed and a special teams contributor. Right. Again, his 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 time in Pittsburgh might not be over, but we'll see what happens in the next coming days. Uh, that's pretty much for the offense. Derwin Gray, uh, our seventh round pick. Um, I'm not surprised he got cut whatsoever, but he could be signed to, back to the pack squad and everything. So, uh, we'll see what happens. And everything. Maybe mm-hmm. maybe we get another great development. Uh. Uh, on our offensive line and everything right, for the future. Know. So Now on to the defensive side of the football. We let go of defensive backs Marcus Allen, Javon Ascu-Henry, Marcellus Branch, I think that's how you pronounce his name, Javante Dean, P.J. Locke, and Trevin Mathis. We also got rid of linebackers Jerron Elliott, Christian Kuntz, to Gray Scales, Sutton Smith, and Robert Spillane, and defensive linemen Winston Craig, Greg Gilmore, Henry Monduix, I think that's how you pronounce Mondu, it. Mondu, I think. Oh, I'm not uh, sure. Casey, Sa- Casey Sales and Connor Sheehy. She. 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 Again, we apologize. Shy. But that's it for the defense, basically. We also got rid of kicker Matthew Wright and punter Ian Berryman. Uh, because, I mean, <clears throat> excuse me, there was no doubt that Chris Boswell and, excuse me, Jordan Berry uh, won their respective position battle so uh Matthew Wright he's very accurate but he kind of he doesn't really have much leg power but uh, I mean there are teams that are kicker hungry in this league so I'm sure he'll find success somewhere Ian Berryman same thing with him some guys are punter hungry so we'll see what happens but as for that I mean those were the cuts so um I mean for the defensive side there were some I mean not necessarily surprises but some names Unnoticeable here. Marcus Allen is definitely one of them. You know, our fifth rounder from last year. This one I wasn't really surprised about. I mean, late in the preseason, he made some plays and turnovers and everything. But well, he also had this one very bad angle <clears throat> against the Panthers and everything that pretty much, pretty much, you know, slammed the door shut on him, making the rush this year. Now he could, be, he'll probably make the practice squad, which I hope. I still like Marcus Allen. I still think he can be a nice development, but. Uh, right. But, um, I mean, when you compare him and Jordan Dangerfield, obviously Dangerfield is the more experienced, probably the more better safety, and definitely the more better contributor at special teams. So it is a very smart move to keep Dangerfield on, especially for the safety position, because outside of the starters, we have no experience there. Yeah, and honestly, Dangerfield outside of Joe Hayden. <laughs> God damn, why am I voice cracking? Jordan Dangerfield outside of Joe, Joe Hayden is probably our most experienced uh, defensive back. So Got an already burned, really. Yeah, so, I mean... It was kind of necessary to bring Dangerfield back. So, and Sutton Smith, I'm sure he'll make the roster, or I'm sure he'll make the uh, the practice squad. You know, um, 
he showed some signs against the Panthers. Granted, it was against third and fourth stringers, but uh, he did look real good in that game. Uh, he might get signed to the practice squad, and it just might be enough. And we worked him out at fullback as well. So with- right, so we're trying to test his versatility and everything, and that might actually help him with the practice squad because we still may want to develop him. Right, a- as well as Robert Spleen, who will uh, probably, again, make the practice squad. He looked real good in the last two preseason games, so uh, he might be another development down the road and everything. So. All right, but that's basically the cut and trade that happened um, with the Pittsburgh Steelers. Right, now on to the 53-man roster. We're going to start with the offense and everything. Um, obviously, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll just go down the line from quarterback all the way down to, to the offensive line. Ben Roethlisberger, Mason Rudolph, and Josh Dobbs. Mason Rudolph did win the number two quarterback position, uh, which we expected. Yeah, I mean, if there was any doubt. I mean, he was obviously the more superior quarterback. Right. And Josh Dobbs, again, he, he you know, Steelers are open to trade him, so we'll see what happens. Uh, James Conner, Jalen Samuels, Benny Snell, Roosevelt Nix, Juju Smith-Schuster, Dante Moncrief, James Washington, Deontay Spencer, and Ryan Switzer, Vince McDonald, Xavier Grimble, Zach Gentry, Marquise Pouncey, David DeCastro, Ramon Foster, Alejandro Villanueva, Matt Feeler, B.J. Finney, Chuck Wilmer for Zach Banner, and Fred Johnson, who was an undrafted free agent this past season, and he made the 53, and he looked real impressive uh, throughout camp, throughout preseason, and honestly, well-deserved, you know, we did lose Mike Munchak. You know, it, it really sucks and really hurt to lose Mike Munchak because, honestly, without him... Ben yeah, probably would not be playing right now. Yeah, his career wouldn't have been extended. We wouldn't have no offensive line. We might not have no fucking offense because, I mean, you look at the offensive line we had before Munchak came in. I mean, I mean, first of all, you just look at Ben's, you know, the amount of times he's been sacked his entire career. He's about to pass Brett Favre, who was the most sacked quarterback in NFL history. Ben has three, four years left in his contract, and he's like 30 sacks away from breaking the record. He was sacked a shit ton his entire fucking career. But when Munchak came in, that, that, that tide completely turned, and he has been one of the uh, less sacked quarterbacks in this entire league in the past five years. Absolutely. Munchak has just completely just revamped this offensive line, revamped this entire offense. Because honestly, without Mike Munchak fixing this offensive line, we would have no, Ben, who knows, Ben might not be playing at this moment. Ben would probably not be the same quarterback. Le'Veon Bell might not get his fucking contract. James Conner might not be anywhere, or he might not be our starting running back. You know? Uh, this, you know... The offensive line is one of your, is probably the main force of your entire offense because without an offensive line, you ain't got shit. Seriously. And you look at our offensive line, man. Alejandro Villanueva, he was in the Army, and he went undrafted, and he was originally a, a fucking defensive lineman, a defensive end for the Eagles. Then Mike Tomlin saw his size. He was attracted by his attributes and his size and everything, so they switched in the left tackle, and look at him now. He is a back-to-back pro bowler, starting left tackle pro bowler. It's an amazing fucking story. Seriously. And, and that's because of Mike Munchak. Yeah. And, and you look at guys like Ramon Foster, who was undrafted. Now he's been our long-term left guard starter. Seriously. And you look at Matt Feeler, who was undrafted and was a development for the past two years. And now he's a starter for and us. And B.J. Finney, who's a very versatile offensive lineman and a very helpful guy when need be to start. If yeah. If there were an injury to our cure. And he was undrafted. And he's our top guard, top, top backup guard. And Zach Barron, he was a fourth-round pick that no one gave a shit about. And then he came to Pittsburgh. He cared more about his well-being and his career and his stature and everything and his physique. And he is uh, uh, a really good backup guard that or a backup tackle that could see time on goal line plays as, a, as an extra blocker or as an extra tight end. And Fred Johnson, I'm sure he'll see some mix in there as well. So, and, and Fred Johnson was on draft as well. So you look at all that, man. Like... Alejandro Villanueva, Matt Fueller, B.J. Finney, Ramon Foster, and 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 Fred Johnson. That's a lot of undrafted motherfuckers that have great rules for this offensive line. Mike Munchak, I can't thank you enough. Like it Seriously, hurt. I, 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 it definitely will hurt. The fa- you know, since you're not going to be a part of the Steelers team anymore. But ever since you came to Pittsburgh, you have done nothing but basically made this offense what it is today. Yeah, the offensive line is the heart. Of an offense. If it wasn't for you, we probably will not have an offense to this day. Seriously, and we're going to miss you, man. But it seems like with Fred Johnson, Son Sherritt, who, is our, who, is, who, who, adapt, who apparently adapted a lot and adapted that Munchak magic because, like we said, Fred Johnson made the roster and he was undrafted this past season. So it seems like he's really adapting Munchak's skills and everything, and hopefully that continues. So good shit on Sherritt because uh, his first big test was not only the right tackle starting gig, but 
undrafted free agent and Fred Johnson, they both did real good jobs this preseason. So hopefully Sean Sarah keeps it up and, 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 and continues that Munchak magic. It's good to see, man. It really is. Now onto the defensive side of the football. Obviously, Cameron Hayward, Stephon Tua, Tyson Alualu, Javon Hargrave, Daniel McCullers, Isaiah Bugs for a defensive line for the linebackers. We got Bud Dupree, TJ Watt, Anthony Jack Lowe, Ola Sukame Danny, Tuzar Skipper, thank God. Vince Williams, Mark Barron, Devin Bush, Tyler McCavage, and you'll see Gilbert for the linebackers. For the cornerbacks, we got Joe Hayden, Steven Nelson, Mike Hillen, Artie Burns, Cameron Sutton, and Justin Lane. For the safeties, we got Terrell Edmonds, Sean Davis, Cameron Kelly, and Jordan Dangerfield. As yeah. well, for special teams, obviously Chris Boswell, Jordan Berry, and Cameron Kennedy. Right. You look at that fucking defense. You look, like, first of all, two's our skipper. As we all know, as we all said, as we all prayed for, he needed, he deserved, and he was an important factor in making the 53. He he needed to. I mean, he was one of the sh- he was probably the most shining star, one of the biggest stars, probably the biggest star of the entire preseason for the Pittsburgh Steelers. He had five sacks in preseason, which led the NFL, and we had 20 sacks throughout the entire preseason. He had five of them. That is a quarter of what the steal was totaled all preseason. Exactly. Five. It's fucking insane. And the guy was fucking an undrafted free agent this year. Seriously. Again, another undrafted star. I don't know where these guys come from, man. It seems like these six and it seems like these late round undrafted guys just they just keep coming, man. Yeah, the past couple like two, three years, these undrafted guys that have come to Pittsburgh have really shined. Yeah. And good. I'm liking it. I'm really enjoying it because it really shows their true potential and true talent, what they can hold, and what we, they possess. And we need it. I'm glad who's our skipper made it, man. I think we're all glad. Man, you know, he like we said, we, he needed to make the roster. And one thing that 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 speaks out about Skipper outside of his you know, impressive play on the field is his mentality. I'm not sure if you guys saw, but he was interviewed and everything, and he said, I don't care what I got to do. I, I, I'll do anything to help this team win. If you want me to be a janitor, I'll be a janitor. A fucking janitor. That, that's great fucking mentality right there. From an undrafted free agent, from a young bull. Seriously, like, that, like, that mentality alone should have given him, uh, pretty much gave him a spot on the 53. It's a fucking rarity nowadays. You look at these guys like, uh, like uh, Melvin Gordon and, 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 and Ezekiel Elliott and, and Trent Williams and Le'Veon Bell, they're all holding out for bigger contracts and shit. While you got fucking Tuzar Skipper out here who was undrafted, barely even made his name in the fucking league, saying, hey, I'll do anything to help this fucking team win. I'll be a goddamn janitor. If you want me to, if you want me to mop floors, I'll do that. Where's this mentality from these players, man? I fucking... Tuzar Skipper's a stud. He's going to be a stud. He's going to be a demon on special teams. He's going to be a nice rotational guy. He's really going to help with Ola being out the first few weeks of the regular season and everything. So, it was great to see Tuzar make the roster. And, and we needed it. Absolutely, he man. He needed it. Seriously. It's great for that for the linebacker position. As well as keeping uh, Ulysses Gilbert. He really... He was another shining star of, of, of the preseason, man. Especially on the defense. You know, he just constantly made plays. On special teams, on the field. You know, I feel like that block punt pretty much solidified his spot on the 53. Absolutely. And he, that's where he's going to thrive. He, that's where he's going to get his feet wet. On special teams, beside Tyler Matakavich. I think you said it. I, I, I think you said that, you know... Ulysses Gilbert has the potential to be the next Vince Williams. Yeah, because like, Vince Williams came out of, I believe it was Florida State, from the sixth round. He started off in special teams. He made a team start off in special teams. Then he built his way up to the starting position once Lawrence Timmons left. And now look at him now today. He's a starting inside linebacker for the Pittsburgh exactly. Steelers. Gilbert Lilly could have the same story. Start off in special teams. He's a much he's not he's not exactly as built as as Williams, but he's more faster. He's just as physical. And he's, and he's much full, better in coverage. Absolutely. Much he's better in coverage. Full of potential. I seriously think Gilbert can be the next Vince Williams. Only better, man. Seriously. I definitely do. Because when Vince Williams goes, we're going to need a guy to step in, and that could be Gilbert. If he continues to thrive and, and, and keeps that drive going and that hunger going, this guy can be a great stud for this, for this uh, defense. And imagine just Devin Bush and Ulysses Gilbert in the future. That might Jesus be the Christ. fastest linebacker core I think I've ever seen. That's just nothing but speed, memory. youth, potential. It's insane. That's scary. That, that would be a scary duo. Right. I mean, we may be overthinking it, but... It's possible. It's very possible with 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 how much potential Gilbert showed. So it's great to see Skipper and Gilbert both make the fifth three. They both needed it. They both deserved it. And we needed it for special teams, for depth. And we said that, hey, we would be so open. And I honestly think that we need 
10 linebackers on this team, and that's exactly what we did. That's exactly what we needed to do. And it sucks to see guys like Johnny Houghton and, and, and Marcus Allen, you know, guys like that, you know, get the shaft because, you know, or get the shaft to make room for those guys. But honestly, it's needed because those guys are, are a little bit more important. And honestly, we have guys that can fill in for a Johnny Houghton or for a Marcus Allen because this entire team is versatile. It really is. You know, yeah, if you really look at this whole team, little everyone has a reason. Like, what's everyone has that? a role. That, that's I mean, thing. honestly, like I look at the roster right now, there's not one guy I see that I can just say is just Depp. I mean, maybe Justin Lane, but that's because he's a, de- he's a development. And honestly, he might be going to IR, so maybe we get Johnny Holton back because of that. But outside of him, I don't see anyone that I can say is, hey, he's just Depp. That's why he made the 53. Now, every single one of these guys has a fucking role, whether it's special teams, whether it's on the field, whether it's as a starter, whether it's it's whatever. Every every single one of these guys has an important role. Absolutely. And everybody on this team, once they're on that field, they can do their job. And I, I honestly have not said that about any Steelers team before in a very long time. Seriously. This team is special. This team is full of talent, potential, motivation. This The team's mentality and motivation and morale is absolutely insane this year. Compared to the past few years, man. I mean, yeah, on paper, we had the team. We had the, you know, we had everything, man. We had the star power. We had the statistics. We had it all. But off the field, it was fucking chaotic. We had nothing there. We had all this fucking drama and shit. And now we fucking, we we kicked that shit to the curb much needed. We kicked that shit to the drain so fucking far that Pennywise the Clown will devour the fuck out that shit. Right. And we brought in all this young, fresh talent that have so much drive and so much hunger to win. Like we said, Tuzar Skipper said, I'll do anything to, to help this team win. I'll be a janitor. I love that mentality. It's and a this, whole, this whole team has that mentality. That's what we needed. And I'm glad we have it. I love this 53. This is the initial 53. It's not the final 53. There could be moves. There could be roster moves in the next coming days, which will probably happen, whether we get a tight end, whether we trade Dobbs, whether we put people on IR. We'll see what happens. Right. If that were to happen, we'll definitely make a video about it. Right. And let you guys know our thoughts and opinions. Of course. But initially, this is a great 53. Every single person has a role. Every single person will... Uh, will See time on the field and everything, you know. Join Dangerfield, like guys like Join Dangerfield. You know, you got you can say, oh, he's a depth guy, but he's a he's a core special teams guy. You know, that's why he made the roster. Special teams, and special teams is something we've lacked, and I feel like we really stacked that up not only with, you know, um, the linebackers, but everyone. You know, Benny Snow will probably see a lot of time with special teams in his first year. Which is perfect for him. It's a way to get his feet wet. Yeah. Ola, Tuzar, and Anthony Chickler will all see time on special teams, as well as Matt Cavage, who's already a demon, and Ulysses Gilbert will make his name there. You know, like you said, Jordan Dangerfield will see time. Ken McKellie's going to split time with Mike Hilton in the slot. Hilton will see time at safety. You know, we'll split reps with them. This team so, is versatile, man. Seriously. It really is. And as for the receivers, yeah. You know, you can say that the receivers and the, and the safeties, on paper, they are slim. But we have guys that can come in and just fill in for the guys that we're missing. You know, Vance McDonald, you know, Randy Fickner has said, hey, I want to use Vance McDonald. I want to I want to spread him out wide in the five receiver sets. I want to split him out wide in the slot. Yeah, he wants to use his versatility. And we also have receiving backs in James Conner and Jalen Samuels and maybe even Benny Snell if you want to use him there. Right. Because for Benny Snell, for a guy that can truck the hell out of you, push you on your ass, he's got some pretty nice hands. Yeah. He showed that in training camp and preseason. Right. So, um... We got guys that can fill in. Although some positions may look slim, we got guys that can fill in and still do just as good. So we'll be fine. And 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 keeping guys like Gilbert and Skipper on the roster was much needed. And we'll I, I think I think we'll see a difference in special teams. You know, because special teams is one of the is really a reason how you win. And with and with Chris Boswell coming back fully healthy and everything, you know, I, I feel like he can come back to his old clutch self. If Jordan Berry can stay focused and, and not punt fucking 15 yards and shit, then I think we'll be good there as well. And like you said, with the people we got on special teams, I think they got enough speed and, and attraction and, and and drive down the field to go uh, make bl- make plays and everything. So um, I love this team. I really love so this team. I, so we'll see what happens, man. Let us know you guys thoughts down in the comments below and everything. And um, Are we overhyping this team? Yeah, maybe a little, but you can't deny the potential. You yeah. can't deny the talent. Just look at the depth, man. It's it, It's insane. I love it. It's some of the best depth we've seen in, in a while, honestly. So, um, outside of tight end, of course. But, um, again, that might be traded. But, uh, big test week one. 
we're on the week one. We're on to we're on the Foxborough. New so, England. Um, it's a, it's a big test. It, it's it's an important test, man. Uh, you guys can expect a preview about the about the uh, Patriots and Steelers Sunday football game coming out very shortly. We got something special going. We got something big planned for that video, man. It's it's, it's gonna be. We're gonna pump this shit up. We're gonna we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna let a fire under this team. Yeah, man. we're getting ready for a war, man. Seriously, this is something you do not want to miss. Seriously, man. So definitely keep an eye out for that, and keep an eye out for uh, for any news and updates about po possible signings, releases, trades that Steelers may end up doing. You know, if they want to make any moves for the fifty-three man roster, so keep an eye out for that. Otherwise, guys, I hope you guys enjoy the video. Like, comment, subscribe. We'll see you guys later. Peace.